welcome to North Georgia Now Today. Bill Sanders, it's Wednesday of our fourth week. Wednesday. Can you believe that? I can believe it, yeah. Four weeks. Well, it, it's like we started yesterday. It is. It goes by real fast. <clears throat> it does. It does. Because when you're having fun, things just fly by. They do. They, they do. do. Now, what's going on with you? Uh, the mountain's thawed out, obviously. Well, yeah, I've still got a little snow up there, though. It's Are just kind of laying me? around in the cracks in the shade uh -huh. and on uh -huh. the roof of the house and where the sun doesn't shine, you know. Yeah. Well, when it rained really, really hard last night, I thought, okay, I'm down here in Hill City. I know I'll get to work, but I don't know if Bill will make it again because oh, yeah. I didn't know what the temperature did. Well, we're more concerned with wind blowing trees down, stuff the like that. The wind was so. horrible last night, wasn't it? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, well, I hope everybody had a safe night and everything was okay. It, just about, it, it just about blew my wig off this morning <laughs> coming in. <laughs> You're like my little buddy Stan Barnett. Soon you ain't going to have to worry about your <laughs> hair. Today I was kind of having a bad hair day and I was fussing with my hair and I thought, well, the alternative is no hair. That's so, true. <laughs> well, you know, every day folks in the community are stopping us and talking to us and telling us they're watching. And last night I was having dinner at Sharp Mountain Grill and some ladies came over and, and said that they were celebrating a birthday. So we want to say happy birthday to Nancy Cantrell. And they also wanted to say a good day to their sister, Helen Green. And, and I think you knew her, and mm -hmm. I've known her for many, many years. Sweet lady. And that's from her sisters, Desi and Nancy. So, so happy, happy day, Helen Green. And we did hear from Doris Jacobs. I don't know if you got to watch us yesterday, but her little great-grandbaby um, is about six days old now and has had a seizure, stroke, some serious things happening. But hopefully... Hopefully, with medication, they're going to be able to control this. But um, everybody put Doris's family on your prayer list because uh, we all know Doris is dealing with cancer and, and a lot going on, and her family has really, really been strong, and then this happens. So um, sometimes um, you know that it's all in God's plan, and you just deal with it. So Right. And I did speak to Charlene at Blue Star yesterday in Jasper, and she said Miss Juanita uh, Wilkie is doing a lot better. She's on the road to recovery. It's mm -hmm. going to be uh, several weeks, but... Uh, they, they thanked everybody for their prayers and support and cards. It's just overwhelming to them how oh, much Oh, she said it's unreal at the cards and letters and, and the flowers she's gotten. Yeah. So, And we all know Miss Juanita Wilkie happens to be the head matriarch of <laughs> Wilkie Way Gardens, which is right across from her house. <laughs> yeah. and, and the kids have always had their prom pictures made there. It's such a beautiful place. It is. They so. take care of her. They take a lot oh, of care man. there. And it's kind of like therapy. You know, I, I love gospel music. That's my therapy. You love singing. That's your therapy. Everybody needs to do something that makes them feel good. And I'm sure Miss Juanita sitting on that front porch rocking, watching the tulip bulbs come up, that, that'll be good therapy for her. So hello to Miss Juanita. Hello to Miss Juanita. Now, we also, last night we had our habitat meeting and we talked about the hullabaloo a little bit and we wanna encourage people, if you have antique cars, and I know Gilmer County is famous for a lot of antique cars, at our habitat hullabaloo, we're gonna have a car show, chili and barbecue cook-off, and it is our once a year fundraiser. And I want to encourage you, get in touch with us at Habitat for Humanity in Pickens County. Um, that's the one time a year that we all come out and we really do try to raise the money. We need to build houses to make housing affordable for people who, who couldn't afford a house. So, now we've got some birthdays. And you told me you know Lori Thacker. Happens to yeah. be a beautiful 22 year old. Lori is celebrating her birthday today, and her daddy, Mark Thacker, celebrated his birthday on the 20th. So, that's a pretty good deal. I think we've got a picture of Lori. And then we have got Jamie Gaddis turns 16 today. That means driver's license, Mama Becky and Danny. And, and Jamie's dad, Danny, did have his biopsy done yesterday. And um, things were not going real well last night, but um, hopefully today will be a better day. So we hope that it will be a good day and things will move right along. Now, have you got any more birthdays? We've got Lori and Jamie. No, don't have any more today. Okay, well, I, I hope that y'all will continue to send your birthdays in. And it was funny because last night I was just sitting there having dinner, and they came over and, and gave me the information. And I love that because they watch every day, and that's a good thing. So now Lori's 22, Jamie was 16, and we want to wish them a happy day. And we also want to wish all the residents out at Grandview Nursing Care a happy day. I know Miss Betty Roper, um, the crowd out there watches, and... Um, a lot of good people, Catherine Downs, who worked in the school system. We were talking about that. You weren't here, but we had the follow-through program. And follow-through was like for about third and fourth graders. It was kind of like it took up where Head Start left off. Okay. And, and it was for kids who, who needed to be followed through with. And, and Miss Catherine was active in that. Now she's out at Grandview Nursing Home. So, you know, there are so many people who have touched our lives, whether it be in the school system, the workplace. 
Those are special places, those nursing homes. I, me I remember when I was a child, my mother would always go and sing there on a Sunday afternoon. And really? And you see the faces just light up, you know, and uh -huh. they just are starving for somebody to come and see them. So. Right. Can your mom sing? Oh, yeah. I didn't know oh, that. Yeah. Now, just isn't that, so that, is soprano, that where you got your talent? I, I guess. I mean, she sings soprano, I don't. But, okay. You know, okay. But, yeah, she's a great soprano singer. Really? Well, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Now, see, all these years I've known her, I had no idea. Oh, so. yeah, she sings better than Elvis. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mama. <laughs> Mama must be watching today. <laughs> I don't know about that. No. I don't know about that. You know, we haven't had time for swapping time, but I think we're going to do a little bit of swapping time today. We have got, um, let's see, we have a sofa and love seat for $150, and that is Mitchell or Katie. And I'm going to give you their phone number, 706-276-7405. Then we have a 2002 BMW convertible. $23,000, 25,000 miles on it. And I actually saw it going down the street in Jasper yesterday. It's a beautiful car. 770-893-7088. And a 1987 Chevy short bed, 4x4, um, $3,700. 770-894-9650. Now, I heard from, they sold that desk yesterday, the big desk. And we also have some antique car parts. And this is just a variety of antique car parts. They came out of an old dealership, and, and I don't know what all it is, but, but the guy came by and we took some pictures of it, and, and you men will recognize these parts, I assume, because I certainly didn't. Phone number 706-253-6909 if you want to run look at those used car parts, and it is old, old cars, kind of like when I was a child, those kind of cars. You're not that old. I'm pretty dang old. Oh. Now, the freezer, the lady had called in the other day, and, and I thought this was a strange phone number, but she says she is from Florida, but she lives up here now, and, and this freezer is in excellent condition, and her phone number is 727-858-6174. And she is located in Jasper, and it's $110 or make an offer. And um, her phone number again is 727-858-6174. Now, I didn't ask Adam, do we have obituaries today? We've got some obituaries. We're going to go do that right quick. And when we come back, you just met Barry Abernathy. I did, yes. And, and I've been listening to his music on ETC. When we come back, we're going to listen to a, a taped interview, Words of Wisdom, today's Wednesday, about Mr. McDaniel, the old school principal in Jasper. And when he's finished, then we're going to bring Barry Abernathy on. And I think people are going to enjoy this because this young man has been lighting up these hills for many years with some great music. So hang around. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Now, grab your coffee, and I want you to sit here for about 10 minutes. We're going to get to meet Mr. McDaniel, a wonderful man. His son, Steve, was actually the principal at Nick's school at Jasper Middle School. So the, tradi the tradition of being an educator followed, you know, and, and his daughter, Marsha, I think, is in education. It, it's a wonderful profession, and today it's got to be tougher than ever because oh, there are yeah. so many new rules and so many things you have to do and, and, and uh, just so much you have to change about the world. You know, True. when a teacher used to could sit and, and get personal with children, now if you do, you get in trouble. Right. So so I want you to meet Mr. McDaniel. He he is a sweetheart, and I, I think he's 80 or 81, and I know you're going to love this interview. And, you know, in the, in the next couple of weeks, on February the 20th, we're going to have Mr. Jesse Ward here. He's 99, mm. and he's very active, so that means, Bill, at 99, we're going to be sitting here, aren't we? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Mr. Jesse yeah. is going to be such an inspiration to everybody, and I know on February the 20th, they'll want to tune in and see him. But I want to introduce you now to Mr. McDaniel. He is, um, he and his wife, Betty Ann, still live in the community and, and go love to come to the gospel singings. They're at every singing we've ever held. And, and we want to talk about that, too. You know, the inspirations will be in Mineral Bluff on February the 7th True. at Salem Church number 2. So, And then this week, the Primitive Quartet is going to be at Ella J Elementary School. I think the concert's at 2, but I'm going to get there early. And, so. uh, <laughs> and Gold City will be in Cartersville, too. Okay, Gold City will be in Cartersville. And, and you know, um, that's one of the things every weekend we look forward. If, it, if there's about a two-hour trip involved, mm. we'll go see some good gospel singing. So it, it always makes you smile, just like Mr. McDaniel's going to make you smile. Now, Adam, are we ready to put him on there? I think we are. Here we go. Hi, I'm Sherry Martin. Welcome to North Georgia Now Today and Words of Wisdom. And today, I have chosen someone who has shared a lot of wisdom. My guest, Mary McDaniel, a young 80-year-old, has been in the school system in Pickens County since what year? Came here in 69. In 69. And in what capacity as a teacher? I was high school principal. High school principal. Have things changed since then? Changed, <laughs> changed every year, I guess. But uh, uh, at that time, uh, it was uh, at a point that uh, a lot of changes need to be made. Mm -hmm. And the superintendent. Uh, uh, who was the superintendent? Uh, Mr. Anderson. Glenn Anderson, yes. who did an excellent job. And uh, I, he uh, came and uh, <coughs> recommended me. Uh, at that time, I was over in White County in Cleveland, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we met on Sunday afternoon at uh, here in Jasper, and the following week, uh, we closed out the contract, and so I came here in 69 and enjoyed every year since. Mm -hmm. Now, you were on, how long did you high school principal? I was high school principal for uh, five years. Okay. And uh, then he wanted me to come into the county office. Mm -hmm. I uh, had the title of curriculum director, but at that time, that included lunchroom director, that included federal programs coordinator. Mm -hmm. uh, they, all these extra programs was under one name. Now, of course, as the system has grown, uh, each one of them has a person in charge. But at that time, Mr. Anderson and myself did all of it. You were busy boys, weren't we're, you? We're boys. <laughs> you were busy boys. You know, uh, we all look back and think that we really like the way things were. Things have changed drastically, haven't yes, they? they really have. um, really we've have. grown so fast. We've grown so fast. Now, was the high school down where the middle school now is now? Where the middle school was, sort of an unusual uh, situation, I guess. Uh, uh, as we came over here in '69, my son was, of course, very, very young. Mm -hmm. He went off and uh, to college and uh, taught at a couple of three places, and then back in Pickens County. And surprisingly, when uh, he was offered the job as principal of Jasper Middle School, mm -hmm. it was in the same office I had moved out of. So. And and your son Steve was an excellent principal right. here. He, he, is, he is a wonderful young man, and, and he kind of reflects his dad and his mom because he had, he had a good raising. Yeah. That boy had a good raising. Well, and, we, and you know your wife's always been involved in education too, hasn't she? Yes, beg your pardon? Has your wife always been involved oh, in yes, education? Yes. yes. She, uh, she started out as, as a teacher 
uh, and whatever uh, at school I was at, I, it was needed, she taught. Mm -hmm. But the majority of the time after uh, she got here, she was a uh, counselor and, uh, and so forth over at, the pick, at that time, Pick and Stack. Right. And, she uh, was involved in the GED program, yes, wasn't she? Yes, yes. She, yes. We, uh, she did that, and I worked and helped her on the Saturdays that she mm -hmm, had, mm -hmm. had, had that. And, and she knew that literacy is a very important thing. Yeah. And, and she, you could tell she was very heartfelt about her job. It was, um, she loved it. And you could tell that she liked helping people. I talked to a couple of ladies who had taken the GED three times and they were talking about how sweet Betty was and, and how she just always would say, well, you know, what can I help you with and how can I, you know, get you to the point you'll pass. And these were ladies who are now in their 70s, but it was important to them to get their GED. So, uh, and they said she made a big impact, that that, that sweet, kind personality. And uh, uh, Steve may be a lot like her. She's, she's been very blessed with that and she enjoyed her work at Pickens Tech. In fact, uh, she still goes over occasionally and, and uh, volunteers. And, and but uh, she, uh, uh, to the point that uh, a lot, most all of the people she worked with now are retiring. You know, mm -hmm. of course, she was one of the first ones to to, to retire. Uh, but uh, most all of them now that was working at that time. Uh, that she went to work with Mr. Harris, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, he. Uh, so that she, was 40 years ago, yeah, wasn't it? And 40 so she years. Worked, she worked with each one of the presidents that they have, they've had over there. Now, Pickens Tech is another story. It's grown immensely. Hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow! It, it's always been a presence in this community, but it's really a presence now. So, uh, one thing that might interest you is that uh, when we came here, uh, the Vocational department was very, very small. Mm -hmm. Vocational agriculture was as important as it is, was just about what uh, was all offered at the high school. Mm -hmm. And through Mr. Harris and myself, uh, we worked together with the State Department of Education and uh, was able to uh, get the first vocational building at the old high school and the first uh, addition to Pickens Tech. Wow. And so uh, we uh, uh, was real proud of that because that took, uh, uh, we were able to send high school students over to the tech school mm -hmm. and this uh, gave them a, a chance to work in masonry or mm -hmm. plumbing or whatever they right. might wanted to do. Right. And uh, this kept a lot of students in school. Exactly. A lot of students in school. You know, we were talking about that earlier this morning. I was talking to somebody else about the fact that not everybody is college bound. Right. It, thank goodness we need a workforce. That's we right. need good masons and we need good carpenters and, and we certainly need good auto mechanics. So it's so important because everybody is not college bound and everybody's not college material. Don't let anybody fall by the wayside. So what you enacted will will carry on forever because right. the auto body shop over there now is awesome. Right, it's it is better. awesome. It's awesome. They have a lot of good departments over there. Uh, a few they have dropped a few of the uh, courses, but majority of them are still in operation and. Uh, on, uh, I think under good leadership, mm -hmm. so that is great. You know, I have to take my continuing education with real estate, and that's offered through Appalachian Technical College. And um, they laughed at me because when I got my real estate license, I was going to the tech school, I was working three other jobs, and I would show up two minutes late for class every day, and my teacher would say, just take a seat and shut up, I don't want to hear your excuse. And I said, look, I'm working three jobs, you're lucky I'm here, you know. So, but, um, Furthering your education at any age is important, and this offers that. So, you know, <clears throat> you know, this is one of the good things about a lot of the programs they have over there. That so many of them are able to go to school and then work. In that's the afternoon. right. That's and right. That, that is good experience. That's right. That's good right. Experience. That's right. Well, this has been good experience talking to you. I wish we could spend the day together. Now, one of your former students, Mike Holcomb, is one of your favorite people. Right. And today, we're not going to tell anybody that I bribed you to talk you into doing this by bringing you a DVD of Mike, are we? This has been fun. It's been educational for me. I, I knew that Steve had a very positive attitude, and I think he might have learned that at home. 
So now guys, remember every week we're going to feature words of wisdom on Wednesdays. So send me your ideas and send me somebody I can go out and talk to. Send me somebody as good as Mr. Mag. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you again soon. Welcome back. Now remember guys, Wednesday is Words of Wisdom. And please submit your ideas to me. I have a gentleman up in the um, Copper Basin, actually he's in McKaysville I'm gonna go interview this week. He's the mayor up there, uh, Mr. Finch, and that's gonna be fun. I think that's gonna be interesting and I love the idea that I get to go to McKaysville because that's a nice drive. Yeah. And it's gonna take me off of the Tri-County Motor Speedway. It's gonna put me on a little road that maybe folks are a little kinder when they're driving. So. <laughs> I like going to McKaysville because that last mile, you don't have to hit the gas pedal. You just no, you just right coast down. That. Yeah. That's right. Now, you know, we were talking about cards and letters we've gotten, and, and they're coming in every day, and I love it. And, and I've, been, I've been holding this one for a while. I've been thinking about it a lot. This one um, talks about my husband when he was a little boy. And, and on my website, I have a picture of J.S. and his grandpa Skid, and J.S. was barefooted. And most of his life, he was barefooted. They were very poor. They were in the Hill City area. But, but this lady, this is precious. She said, we enjoy watching your show on ETC. Keep up the good work. I remember seeing your husband when he was a young boy walking to town with his grandparents and they would pass our house. You could see the love they had for one another. Good memories. They were uh, making them for me and just by watching them, God bless you and your family. And I said, you know, can you imagine today walking from Hill City to town? This is from Miss Helen Free. And because the return address said Jean Free, I thought it was her husband. I thought that man's got the best handwriting I've ever seen. But it's from Miss Helen Free. And, and thank you because JS's grandparents were a big part of his life. And everybody knew Skid and Lily Jane. And everybody knew that Lily Jane was the boss. <laughs> She was a little bitty lady, but she was the boss. Now, Bill, will you read a little bit of another letter we got today? It was a long letter, and we can't go through the whole thing, but I, I want you to know that people are tuning in and sending us kind words, and, and, and you know, send me your ideas. Send sure. me ideas. So. Well, this one says, in closing, I want to wish you the best of luck in your many adventures, and that God will keep leading you in the way that you are going to be in service to Him. As you know, when He is your guide, He won't steer you wrong. I hope you keep getting uh, all the blessings that you deserve. The thought just came to me, the reason God has opened up so many doors to you is because He knew that you were so dedicated and loved J.S. so much. He knew how much you would miss and grieve over J.S. So He has given you a new lease on life and you will know, uh, you will never know how much people uh, in turn will reach, you will reach through their, your works. Uh, keep up the good work and I'll keep watching you no matter what time of day it is. From the bottom of my heart, from one friend to another, I love you, Miss Diane Green. Diane works down at Cagle Funeral Home, and we, we have had some sad times together. Um, we lost her sister, Faye, was one of my dearest friends. And, and I took Faye up to Hominy Valley to see the Primitive Quartet. That was her last wish. She was very, very sick then. She didn't make it long after that, but that was, that was one of the best days of my life. And, and sharing those special times with you ladies in the Widow Wagon. And we all laugh about it, but, but it has made such a difference in our lives. It really has. And, and you know, I've shown up and sat through concerts bawling like a baby. And then I've sat there and just tapped my foot and been so happy. So yeah. it has been a very positive force in my life. And if something tragic happens to you, turn it around turn it around because everybody can tell you I wallowed in self-pity for about six months and then I got on with life so and 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 you were part of that life because you came into my life about them with singing and I started going to all these concerts and hauling my grannies around <laughs> and I love it now our next guest happens to have been singing in this area a long long time we're going to go to the community calendar and when we get back Barry Abernathy will be here and he forgot his banjo so I may send oh. him back home y'all just hang around we'll be right back
April yes, yesterday. Okay. April yesterday, I did, yeah. Welcome back to North Georgia Now. Get you a cup of coffee, and we're going to spend some time with Barry Abernathy. Welcome. <laughs> well, thanks, Sherry. Good to, good to be here. I'm glad we got you, because I understand you're going to be going to Switzerland soon, aren't you? I'm afraid I am. I can't get out of it. I've tried, and they already bought plane tickets. Well, we felt very <laughs> fortunate that you were available, so well, I'm so glad. You. We've been watching you. You know, we've been talking all this week about the Morgan Cantrell Heart Fund. Yeah, I saw a little bit on, uh, I guess it was Monday morning. I uh -huh. came in wee hours of the night and stayed at my mom and dad's. And uh -huh. I live so far I don't have cable, so I had... Did they pump in sunlight? At your house? They have to pump in. Oh, it, no. it gets there about 10 o'clock in the morning and stays <laughs> about dinner time. Bill, same way, same <laughs> way, same way. Well, there's no excuse for not having ATC because you can get on the computer. Well, see, I didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah, I told you this morning, y'all can watch it on the computer. You just go to our website and then click on streaming videos. So, no excuses. There you go. <laughs> now, tell me a little bit. You said you started with the Heart Fund when you were 13, 14 years old? Somewhere in that range, yeah, 13 or 14. And uh, I been, I've been singing in church since I was probably 10 or 11 and uh, started taking up uh, the banjo some, somewhere around 13 or 14. Uh -huh. And uh, the, have been playing a month or so and uh, Morgan Cantrell and uh, Ralph Chancey and some of those guys uh, coached me up on stage with them. And I played the first time, uh, first time I ever appeared on stage was with Morgan and Ralph and a bunch of them. Uh -huh. uh, I couldn't tell you who and all was there. He was probably 10, 10, 10 of us on stage, but it was a, a big time. Well, I wish things was still, uh, still felt like that when you mm -hmm. did. I could play in front of 50,000 people now and it wouldn't feel like it did, no, you know, no. then. That was, that was, that was, the newness of it was awful cool. And it was a special memory forever, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, 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 most definitely. Yeah, they were talking about the money raised. I think one of the first heart funds was like 600 and some odd dollars. And, wow. and Bill, what is our thought for the day? Thought for the day is together we can achieve more. That's right, yeah. and, 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 and as a community here, you know mm -hmm. that's the truth. Together we can achieve more, oh, whether yeah. it's the Heart Fund or the March of Dimes or yeah. the Relay for Life. Mm -hmm. It takes musicians like you donating yeah. your time, and it takes musicians like you donating your time, and it takes like people like me calling their friends and going out in the community. Yeah. So together we can achieve more. Oh, yeah. yeah and, and now when you do this now, do you have much time for charity work because you travel so much? Some, but not a lot. It's usually something, if it is, it's something local. Uh, and it means something really special yeah, to you. Yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, we do, you know, we do things it's like if, if we're out traveling, going to and from uh, places and there's something in between that we can reach, you know, it's just, it's so hard to, to pay a band, you know, all the time. And so my guys are all on salary. So mm -hmm. I have to, I have to work and make money to be able to pay them. If I don't, I go down to United Community Bank and, and they go, oh Lord, <laughs> <laughs> here he comes again. <laughs> You don't think about that, but I guess that's true. Now, now, you've got a new CD. I got on your website last night, and I uh -huh. looked at your new CD. How are sales going? Is that How many CDs have you done? You know, I don't know yet. Uh, they, they give a report at the end of the quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, after the first of the year, it was released October 23rd. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking somewhere in the eight to 10,000 range wow. right now is, is wow. where we're at. That's, that's normal for the last couple of CDs have been in that range. Uh, and that's point. bluegrass. Bluegrass, yeah. But they peak out in a hurry. They'll, they'll peak out normal, normally 20, 25,000 is, is about where we peak out at right now. So. Well, we laughed about my bluegrass little escapade when I threw that bluegrass CD aside and wouldn't even listen to it. Now I listen to bluegrass all the time. But, but ETC's the reason, because a lot of times, and, and actually, I think two years ago, I sponsored the Bluegrass Festival really? in memory of J.S. because it was on the day he died. Oh. No, it was on his birthday. It was in June. That's right. Yeah. And I thought that was neat. And I thought, well, I should probably attend, but don't like bluegrass music. Now all of a sudden I like bluegrass music. So well, I got you a new I've one right of, here. You thank you. I've, I've come full circle. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I liked the Righteous Brothers, and I liked Elvis, and, and then I liked Southern Gospel, and now I like bluegrass. So, <laughs> and, and the talent of bluegrass amazes me. There's a lot of talent. It amazes it's, me. We just had a, we've had a couple of band changes this year. Uh, our lead guitar player and our mandolin player both left to, to do other things, and, and the talent pool is just amazing, what, what come out of the woodworks. Uh -huh. Of course, we had our guitar player, we had the one in mind that we wanted for, for years and wasn't sure that he would take the job, but we hired a... Clay Hess, he used to play with uh, Ricky Skaggs and Kentucky Thunder. Wow. And, well, that's man, he's a terrible resume to have. Yeah, it? <laughs> it is. He's, he's yeah. incredible. And uh, yeah. the new guy we've got now is Aaron Ramsey on the mandolin. And, and he's uh, he, he's 22, just turned 22 years old. And just the these, these guys are just 
Uh, it's amazing what they can do with their instrument at, at such a young age. I guess all the technology and the different ways to practice and, and have so much to listen to mm -hmm. now that they're, mm -hmm. but that boy, if he turns sideways, you wouldn't even, behind a microphone stand, you'd lose him. He don't, <laughs> but he's tall as I am, probably weighs 130 pounds. So. Wow, like Mike Hawkins, 6'4", 94. Yeah. <laughs> That's about right. Yeah. yeah, we've heard that years. Mike is no longer 6'4", 94. <laughs> Well, the one thing I always am amazed at bluegrass is is not the singing, not not the other stuff. It's just the banjo playing. How fast those guys play! Oh, yeah. It's yeah. amazing. It is amazing. It is amazing. It's, now, uh, did you have lessons? No, I, I took a, after I learned. I, I took a few lessons uh, here and there. Not really lessons, but just sit with guys that were mentors of mine and and pick their brains. And, and uh -huh. uh, but I never had any lessons. But official, where you just go in and pay them for lessons. But now, when I started with. Uh, with Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver in 94. Uh, Doyle was a pretty accomplished banjo player himself. And mm -hmm. Dale Perry, the guy that played bass in the band at the time, ended up being the banjo player after I left. So both of those guys were uh, well schooled in, in the ban bluegrass banjo. Mm -hmm. And they helped me out a whole lot. I was doing things with my hand like it is. I was doing things the way I heard them and trying to make them sound, uh, sound like the way I heard them on the record. And sometimes mm -hmm. it wouldn't turn out like that. And, I could sit and watch those guys, and they could show me something, and I could figure out ways to uh, to incorporate that into into my style of playing, where I could turn a roll around mm -hmm. instead of having to have an extra finger up here to chord something. I'd find an open string somewhere, wow. and that really helped me a whole lot. Those guys uh, were were a big influence in, in me learning to play uh, what little I can. Is <laughs> not, anybody in your family musical? Yeah, not not immediate, but my grandpa on, on my mother's side, Grandpa Roy, he was a, a real good. Uh, rhythm guitar, uh, Riley Puckett style rhythm mm -hmm. guitar player, and sung old time singing, and uh, and uh, like he's a big fan of Hank Williams, uh, senior, and and he's he's a big influence, and uh, my cousin Lowell Davis, uh, probably my biggest musical influence. Uh, he's my third. I think we're third cousins. I may not have that right. Maybe last cousins. You know? <laughs> but uh, he's he was a big big uh, influence, and his brother David. They were all. Uh, influences uh, on me musically. Mm -hmm. there, there's music scattered around. I know. I, I don't know if you know the Gorley Boys from down in, in uh, Ball Ground. Mm -hmm. I know it's down your way. Now their uh, grandmother and my great grandmother were sisters and all that whole family's just musically inclined. They're, they're all just great players. And, and I hate families like that because our family, nobody is musical. <laughs> We're the kind of family when we show up at Mount Vernon Baptist Church over in Dawson County to sing, they're like, oh, I hope they sing quietly. <laughs> because some people have it and some people don't. It's, it's funny. It, I got it, a good story. It's not too funny when you hear it sing. <laughs> I got a good story. My, I was about 14 and we used to go to the same bunch that played at the Heart Fund show that first year or two there. We used to all gang up at uh, JR's restaurant up uh, up Highway uh, 515 now. I remember that. And yeah. my mom would take me up there. I wasn't old enough to drive legally yet, so uh, she would take me up there on Saturday nights and they'd all have a big jam. And we, I got up on stage to play with them. We played two or three songs, and the last one I played was uh, Rocky Top. And we played, I mean, everybody, it was 20 people on stage, and everybody took a break. And I could look, and my mom was sitting out there just talking away, carrying on. And, and uh, we got done playing it, and I did a big rake and ended the song, and people clapped, and my mom stood up in the audience and said, Barry sang Rocky Top. <laughs> <laughs> we just played about 10 minutes worth of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the best stories I got on Mama. She gets so mad at me for telling that, so I <laughs> need it. <laughs> well, you know, God does give you talent, and, oh, yeah. and, and I have a child who's, you know what it's like to be a 16-year-old boy? I can barely remember it. But. Sometimes they're bashful. <laughs> sometimes they're very brazen. Sometimes yeah. they're bashful. Well, you know this. Nick can sing, and, and one day our <laughs> oldest daughter came in. Nick was about 12, and she said, Mom, that boy can sing great. And I said, I know it, but you can't get him to sing. <laughs> so I had this brilliant idea. I would send him on the road with the inspiration. Yeah. So when he was 14, he went out with them, and, and he rode the bus, and he turned around with them a little wow. while, and he would just help them unload and load. And I thought, being around them, he will relax. Yeah. I was wrong. <laughs> he'd sit on the bus, and Melton said he could sing anything. He'd just sing, and he'd sing, and he'd sing. You get in front of somebody, and that boy freezes up like really? 90. <laughs> well, I came up to... Um, is it Blairsville where they have the fair? No, Hiawassee. Hiawassee picked him yeah. up at the fair. They, he went out on the road and I picked him up up there. And I walk in and he's so excited. And he's seen, is it Dr. Ralph Stanley? Yeah, he's Ralph seen Stanley. him. Now he just thinks he is 
he is the it. <laughs> so he's all excited and he's just, oh, and he said, Mama, come back here. He said, uh, Primitive Quartet, Norman taught me how to play the mandolin, da da da. And he's all excited and, and I'm like, well, good, good. I'm thinking he's finally getting into it. And yeah. I said, You gonna sing now? Oh, no, I'm gonna <laughs> learn to play the mandolin. I said, What you mean? I said, You got this great voice. And he said, Oh, no, I ain't gonna sing. So he goes back there and he comes out and he has this mandolin. And he said, Mama, he said, Norman said he'd send me this mandolin and it's only $1,800. <laughs> I said, Do what? I said, Son, I sent you out of here to learn to sing, not to cost me money. And he said, But it's worth $4,000. Well, we bought that mandolin. And he sits in front of the computer really? and listens to Doyle, basically, really, yeah. and Barry and, and whatever, and, and has learned to play. Wow. And, and I can sit there and stare at it and say, There ain't no way I could figure that bad boy out. But he just does it by ear, which yeah. blows my mind. Yeah. But he still won't sing. He's six <laughs> and he still won't sing in public. He won't hardly sing in the shower now. Well, he'll have but to, it's such a waste of talent. Yeah, he'll have to get used to that to, if he wants to play all the time, play I for a living. I told him girls like boys that sing. <laughs> he said they like boys that win races, too. So he's racing now. <laughs> <laughs> he's racing now. But it is funny that yeah. when you have that talent, you should use it. Yeah. You know, you were a little bit bashful, weren't you? Oh, yeah. You? For years and years, I was. I can remember your first, your first videos here at ETC. You can tell a difference in your presence because you <laughs> You can see he was a little bit laid back, a little yeah. bit, you know. Well, so yeah. I got kids the same way. It's just talking about being bashful. I've yeah. got a, a younger daughter, and she can sing the lights out, but not in front of anybody else. <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> weird? Mm -hmm. now, now, when you travel, how many people a week do you see? Oh, Lord. It's uh, hard, to, hard to say between the... Like three concerts a week? Two yeah, a week? two to three. I, I'd say we probably average two or a little better between two and three. Do y'all take turns driving the bus or does one yeah, person? Yeah, well we have a driver in the summertime but we take a lot and we'll relieve him but uh, myself and Jason Moore, our bass player, the two main bus drivers now, uh, one of the guys that just left was a real good bus driver so we did have three oh, beside. Wow. So that, that hurts. We're going to have to break some of these young boys in. Uh -huh. <laughs> now are they local guys? Tell me where the guys in your group are No, uh, Jason, our bass player is from Ruffin, North Carolina which is up in the Greensboro area, Danville, uh -huh. Virginia uh -huh. area. And uh, i got to think who's in my band now. Josh Schilling's from Martinsville, uh, Virginia and he uh -huh. lives in Hendersonville. Where they now. race? Uh, for the race, See, at, yeah. I identify everything. Yeah, with he's he's played. The, he's got to play and sing on the racetrack several times oh, wow. during the race, and then they have a big uh, Fourth of July festival up there where the place is just full, and uh, he's he's a real popular figure in that area up there. And uh, anyway, let's see. Got to remember who I got. Jimmy Van Cleef from Canton, North Carolina, and he he now resides in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And then Aaron Ramsey, the new mandolin player, is is from. Uh, Morganton, North Carolina. So we got a lot of Carolina boys. And then Clay Hess is from Athens, Ohio. So we're scattered. And how did you get this group together? Originally, Steve Gully and myself talked about this. Uh, we were both together in, in Quicksilver, Doyle Austin mm -hmm. and Quicksilver, through uh, 95. And then I stayed on through uh, up till 99, uh, late, late 98, early 99. And uh, I left and Steve and I got back together and formed this band with Jim Van Cleve, the fiddle player at the time. Uh, Jim is, uh, he was I think 18 or 19 years old when we started this band, so mm -hmm. he, he was young and so he and Steve and myself started and got together with Adam Steffi, uh, played the mandolin and that band stayed pretty much together. We added Jason Moore uh, about a year and a half in, uh, the bass player, and that band stayed together like it was until, uh, gosh, it's been, I'm trying to think when we brought the first lead guitar player in was probably... 2003 or four or something like that we brought in Clay Jones to play lead guitar and he stayed up until this past summer and then we hired Clay Hess mm -hmm. on the guitar so it's been it's been this year's the first real changeover we've had mm -hmm. in the band so it's been almost nine years we've had wow. had one one big year of change but uh, normally in a band four to five years is you know people start getting bored and wanting to move on and mm -hmm. you know there's not a lot of money in it it's a uh, it's a real rewarding job, you know, because you get to create music and uh, get to do what you always want to do for and to make a living at it. But uh, there's not a lot of money, so people, as they get families and goals change, they move right. on and do things. But it's a, uh, I appreciate everybody that's been here. It's been been a, been a good time. And, and you have a following. You have a following. Somewhat. I, yes, you do. You do. And people were excited that you were going to be here. Oh, Lord. And, and, you know, I said it was funny because I'd never met you. I, no, that's I'd just because they want to laugh at me. They say, oh, he's going to be on and we're going to laugh at him. No, no. <laughs> people really do enjoy it. And, and I think they enjoy the fact that you have given back to the community. Oh, shoot. And, and that's a big part of what this area is about. We talk about that sure every day. Is, you yeah. have to give back. You yeah, have to this, give back. This television station, since it's been going, has been a real big uh, 
thing in the community. People, oh, you can absolutely. tell everybody that's from here just really enjoys it. Oh, and yeah. uh, I wish we had cable on Big Creek because it's hard for me to get up and log in my computer. No, you <laughs> in can do the that. Morning. Well, it was funny last night. Sit in the cold room in the house. <laughs> <laughs> last night I was in a meeting and a lot of people there were from Big Canoe, and one of them. <clears throat> came out and he said, I got to catch your show yesterday morning. And I said, really? He said, I was in the doctor's office and they had the TV on ETC3. Well, and so I thought that was so cool because a lot yeah. of people, Big Canoe, we don't reach. I'm not sure if we go all the way to Benton Tree, but there are so many people who are catching us by accident. And, and I got a call when I left you the other day and it's a lady who lives I think it's at Walnut Mountain. Walnut. I don't know if we go in there or not, but she said she was here in LJ doing a job, and as she was doing the job, she glanced over at the ladies' TV, and it was on ETC3, and she got to see us. <laughs> so I said, you know, it's cool that people know that we're about the community, and yep. we're about what it takes to live in this community. Yeah, they really, really are. One of the things that, <clears throat> when you started doing this, did you actually think you would make a living at it, or did you do it to help out the community? Did you, did you just do it because you loved it? Well, did I, you I just, really think it'd be a job? I loved music, and I always wanted it to be what I did all my life for a living uh, from the time I was 15. I mean, everybody that knows me knows I, w I didn't do nothing else but that, you know, that and coon hunt when I was a kid. That's about oh, it. Oh, that sounds like Nicholas Martin. Oh, gosh, does that mean there's hope for him? I'll be so glad when racing season starts back. I'm so tired of them coon dogs. <laughs> but that's, that's all I wanted to do when I was a kid. So. Oh, wow. Hey, Barry, one of the things I like in our group, and I know you'll uh, respond to this the way I do, when we're practicing a song and, you, and it just comes together, you almost get chill bumps hearing oh, it. Oh yeah, when it when it gets right. Yeah, yeah. and people right. out in the audience before you ever present that song don't know that, but no. it's just a good feeling when you you get a song together. It is. And even after you've sung it several times, you still get that feeling, and it's just one of those things that's just a great song. Yeah. And, and it's it's good to present to people. It you know? sure is. And and when it's and it's funny you don't the people don't know this, but when it's new to you, uh, when the song's still fresh and new for the first few months that you do it. Uh, the way people respond to it because of the energy that the band has or the, the yeah. musicians or singers have together, that energy that they have and the excitement they have, you don't realize that it's showing, but it really does. It, it, uh, the response in the audience is even better. But even after the song's newness, so so-called newness wears off, you still there, there's that. still that because yeah. it, years later you can be singing the same song and yeah. it just comes over you. Yeah, well, you created that too. You yeah. know, it's, it's that, that, that that's what, Do you write music? Not a lot. I, I don't. I don't have my brain. Don't slow down enough to. I got so much Does going. Does anybody in your group? Right? Yeah, my, most of the guys do. Most of the stuff that we record now is, is written within the band. Uh, Jim, the fiddle player, all the he writes all the instrumentals and probably half of our uh, uh, material. And then Josh, the new lead singer, he, he writes every day. He has, really? he lives to write songs. Yeah, wow. writes a lot of songs. And Steve and I used to write some together when he was in the band. Uh, and we wrote, you know, mo mostly gospel material together. Uh -huh. That's it, what I was going to ask you. Is it now a mix of bluegrass gospel? Yeah, it? it's not as much gospel as I'd like for it to be. But with mm -hmm. the with the strains of trying to make a living and the guys we have right now, we don't get to do as much uh, gospel as I'd like to do. But that's that's where I that's what I love to do. I, I, I love just sit down with the quartet and and saying that's my that's my pick. Right. So. Have you ever done one of the cruises, like the gospel cruises? Never have. We, we've always uh, we got so many people in the band, and uh, I, I always feel like they should at least, if they want you to come play for free, they should at least let you take your family with you or your Most wife. Of them and do. well, the the gospel ones might, but the bluegrass ones oh, don't. Oh, okay. No, they mm -hmm. they don't want to pay you. They want you to come, and, and well, we're giving you a free cruise, and mm -hmm. and it's just hard to turn down a whole week's worth of work, right. you right. know, uh, to make a living to to go and. Uh, and not be able to take your family. We have a friend, Buddy Jones and Jasper, who does bluegrass t-shirts, and he really? always does all the bluegrass festivals, and he does the, the cruises, too, really? and I thought that's interesting that that many bluegrass people, because I know what the gospel cruisers are like. They're packed yeah. down. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And then the families go, and it's, they don't have the gambling, they don't have the liquor yeah. on the ships, and it's just a wonderful week of family yeah. fellowship. I'd say the bluegrass cruises probably do have the gambling and liquor, if I was guessing. Then yeah, so. But the sure. one thing those gospel cruises do have is a lot of storytelling. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's lying, it's bad, it's drinking and cheating. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Now, you, I asked you earlier how many miles do you travel a year, and you weren't sure. Is I'm it, not do sure. Do you fly any, or do yeah, you drive Yeah, we fly. All we, we go, uh, gosh, I'm, I'm trying to think of where we've been, but in the last three or four years we've been everywhere from the tip of South America to uh, South America. Yeah, Canada and we're going to Switzerland next week and 
gosh, I'm, I can't think of everywhere we've been. People in South America listen to bluegrass music. I don't know that they listen to it. They did while we were there. <laughs> but, uh, Isn't but it's that uh, unusual? Yeah, the em people from the embassy, I think there were some fans of the band that uh, were with the, with the embassy, and they got it. Somehow wow. got it, got connected, and it was a, that one of the best trips I've ever been on with South Isn't America. That something? Food it, was incredible. Well, I they mean, say it it's a, a beautiful country. It is, and the people there were, were I mean, it was so surprising that, that they didn't speak English or anything. Most of them didn't, but but like we went out and, and rented a little John boat, me and a couple of other guys in the van, and went like two miles out in in the ocean and caught a bunch of fish, don't even know what they were. Nobody could tell me, speak English, <laughs> tell me what they were, and brought them back in, and the, the guy that we stayed at a five-star hotel, and the guy, the chef in the restaurant, and the owner of the restaurant came out, and he said, oh, I cook, I cook. <laughs> so we gave him the fish, he cleaned them, and, and I think we just, all we did was uh, gutted them, he cleaned them, and, and cooked them for us, and, and put all the all the fixings with them, and uh -huh. uh, we came, went in, took showers, came back down, and ate Had fresh fish that night. Wow. Yeah. So it was a great time, and the meat, the, the steak and stuff over there is, uh, all just free range. Uh, it, it's not. Uh, there's nothing in the feed. They don't feed them. It's just mm -hmm. free range cattle, and it's amazing. You can you can take a fork and and just cut through it. It's, wow. it's incredible how good. We it were is. talking about that the other day. How our food here has changed so much, and, yeah. and so many chemicals, and so many yeah. things that I know aren't good for us. But I didn't know things like that even existed. Oh still. yeah, it's See? incredible. And all the restaurants over there have uh, a fire pit built in. It's just a big. I mean, it's as big as this table, but they have a grate up there. They put their wood in early in the morning, probably 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, and they'll start their wood and build their fire, and as the coals fall down, they'll spread them out over the, in the pit and cook over them all cook day, and they cook their meat wow. over that, and it's, wow. it's amazing. Well, what a great life's experience, and, yeah, and, and, and who'd have thought it? Who'd have thought a banjo-picking <laughs> boy <laughs> could travel the world over? When yeah. I got on there and saw you were going to Switzerland, I thought that lucky dog, yeah. and then I thought, no, that's a long flight. Yeah, it's, <laughs> if I could get out of that one, I probably would. But now, what, what is happening in Switzerland? What are you going to? You know, I don't even know yet. It's it's a, uh, I can't pronounce the festival. It's it's a weird name, but it's a music festival. They have okay. bluegrass and country and different things there. Oh. And I've done it before. It's uh, I did it in '95 with Quicksilver, and uh, it was a good experience. A lot of people, and uh, there's a lot of bluegrass fans in Europe. Probably as many. Really? As, yeah, there's a lot in Europe. Wow. Uh, Germany. Well, I played in Germany and Austria and uh, uh, Italy. And, and Czechoslovakia and all that. Yeah, they, they really like it over there. There's bands, there's actual bluegrass bands in each one of those countries. In those languages? Oh, yeah, yeah. You are kidding. Well, yeah, and they sing the songs like we sing them. I mean, not I exactly. I bet if they bought the Gaither bluegrass with you, they wouldn't have thrown it aside like I did. No, no, they, they loved it. Oh, that is funny. Well, 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 I've learned a lot from you because I honestly thought that bluegrass was West Virginia to Georgia. Yeah. Never had an idea. Well, it's, it's definitely West Virginia to Georgia. In, in the past 10 years, I've seen such a, our band is, is a, it stretches the boundaries of bluegrass, and, and to to somebody outside of bluegrass, they think we're hardcore bluegrass. But then the people that that listen to bluegrass and have all their life like me, and we're way outside the box. And, mm -hmm. and so the West Virginia to Georgia <coughs> traditional bluegrass people kind of turn their nose up at us some, and then you get outside of that, and people are like, I mean, it's amazing the difference what I've seen the last 10 years of uh, uh, the acceptance. We, we don't. Uh, I mean, I'm the same way. I, if, if somebody came in here and I and I was picking like I always have around here and I heard them do something different, I'd be like, well, I don't like that. I like to hear Flat and Scruggs or mm -hmm. I like to hear Dan Tominsky sing, you know. But what I found out by having my own band is there ain't but one Dan Tominsky and there ain't but one Flat and Scruggs. And you mm -hmm. just get your guys together and start coming up with ideas and playing and, mm -hmm. and uh, what comes out comes out and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Well, how many 16-year-olds love Dr. Ralph Stanley like my child does? There's a pretty good bit of them. Well, it's, boy, uh, the old I brother, get... The old brother thing set it on fire. I got in trouble when he was in LJ a few weeks ago. I think it was right before we started doing this show. I told Nick he was going to be in town. He was all excited and he was just all hyped up. And then I forgot the weekend it was. I thought it was the next <laughs> weekend. So I got in trouble. And so I called Dr. Stanley's office to see if we could hire him to come and play for Nick's birthday. We can, but I need another job, ETC, or I need a big raise. <laughs> because I can get him, but I can't get him cheap. <laughs> I remember. Uh, Nick said, I can't believe you did that to me. And I said, son, we'll get him for your birthday. You're going to be 16 March 3rd. We'll get him for your birthday. Oh, no, I need one more job. I'm on Ralph's plan. <laughs> I'm on Ralph's plan right now. It's the bluegrass wave. When you, 
you you go all these years and you starve to death and if you can live to be 80 and all of a sudden you're cool with all kids so i don't know how that happens but but it's just it's amazing to watch our our industry uh these people that have been great for all their life and then and it takes them 30 years Isn't it takes 30 years because there's no major market radio television or anything to get the word out to the masses uh -huh. and from to hear it when they hear bluegrass music um, they hear a lot of stuff that's not that's not real good. I mean, uh -huh. it's, it's good. It might be good to me or you, but but uh, to the kids, you know, it has to have some, not necessarily commercial appeal, but it has to be. You know, if they hear one bad thing, that's what they associate the whole industry with. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, but uh, but it's amazing how it takes 30 years to to really establish yourself. Have and, you been doing this 30 years? No, I hadn't, unfortunately. But uh, I'm working on it. But I've been I've been playing uh, for a living since 93. Mm -hmm. and well, you so and I talked about this. James Jones is there. a mutual friend oh, of ours. Yeah. And, and, and I saw a picture of you and James <laughs> about 30 years ago. And, and I looked at the picture and I said, James, where are you in this picture? He said, right. I said, no, no, where are you? <laughs> he said, that's me. That's me. So some of y'all have changed, haven't you? Yeah, yeah I'm a lot less hair and a little more <laughs> midsection. Yeah, well, uh, James is an awesome voice, isn't he? Oh, he's incredible. I an love, awesome voice. I really miss being around James Jones. He's, a, he's he, one of the finest. And he's a good man. He's one of he's the finest men I've ever been around. I love him to death. And, and he has that distinct voice. What is that? Um, What's that song about the grave that he sings? Um, oh, I can't remember. Oh, me. He sang it Christmas for us, and, and I just, when he sang that song, I thought, and it was a cappella, and it was just, make your hair stand yeah. up, you know? And I thought, what a voice, and he's yeah. carrying mail every day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, he has to have a job, and he has yeah. to make a living, no, but he's he has had that several, passion for music. James has had several good job offers, but none of them. Uh, come up uh, financially with the post office. Right. So. <laughs> well, and, and the fact that he has, you know, he and Tracy had Haley yeah, late in life. Yeah. And, and now they have a new baby uh, coming. Did you heard. know that? Yeah, yeah, that's what I've heard. yeah, they have a new baby coming. <laughs> and and he's over, he's 43 or something, isn't yeah. he? So, <laughs> welcome back to diapers, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but they're so excited about yeah, that. But, they but he it. loves to sing in church. So yeah. he still sings. And, and Tracy sings great. Yeah, now, Tracy's a great singer. That's mm -hmm. who, when we first started, uh, I heard about James and Tracy and, uh, Somehow I called him, invited him over to mom and dad's when I was probably 20, 21 years old, maybe even earlier than that, 19. And uh, they came over and we sang and I recorded. I uh -huh. wish I could find some of those old uh -huh. tapes, but uh, me and James and Tracy sung and then we got Barry Scott involved and uh, that was the formation of Silver Creek and that stayed together right. for, for I have three a Silver years. Creek CD. I actually have a Silver Creek little, um, what did they call it before? Cassettes? Cassettes. Cassettes, yeah. yeah. That's bad when you can't, when it's yeah. been so long you can't even remember what they're called. Man, it's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? I'm 38. <laughs> well, you're younger than most of my kids. I hate that. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, well, I think Barry is, uh, let's see, if uh, Barry Scott's about 41 and yeah, James so. is 43, so yeah. he was the oldest of y'all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, how many years were y'all together? Probably where we played is that that where we were recording and playing like that was probably about three years. Yeah. Uh, me and Barry Scott played together in, in high school off and on. Keith Ledford had, uh, we had a little FFA string band like thing. We went uh -huh. and played the Heart Fun shows and all that for all those years and uh, That's so great, neat. great memories. Uh, I used to have all kinds of stories from the, from, uh, the Heart Fun shows. I can yeah. remember Barry uh, one of his girlfriends uh, ripped her dress one night and wouldn't let him come. We, it seemed like somebody else had to come pick with us. I don't even think Barry made it. He had he was there and had to leave. Well, that's a story I can believe. <laughs> <laughs> so it's something all the time. <laughs> well, and a lot of good memories. Oh, yeah. And, and you've memories. created a lot of good memories for people. Well, and well, and as me. you travel, we wish you much safety I because it, um, you're going, oh, you're going over there. Well, I don't want to be going on that long plane ride. <laughs> yeah, so. it's hard when you got a wife and, and kids at home. And, uh, uh, my, little, my oldest girl, Chastity, uh, my wife told her this morning that I was going to do this TV show and she gets to watch it at my mom and dad's some while I'm gone. Uh -huh. And she said, is he going to talk, what's he going to talk about, mama? She says, he's going to talk about his kids and his animals. <laughs> <laughs> do you live on a farm? Uh, not really. It would be if I was there all the time. Okay. I've got I've got six horses and, and a coon dog and that's paralyzed. You have another coon dog. <laughs> yeah, it, don't, it, can't, it can't go anymore. It's paralyzed. But, uh, Oh uh, Lord, yeah, it would be a farm if I was home enough. I just I'm not, I live so far out. I don't have anybody to help me take care of the stuff. But Does your wife and family ever get to travel with you? If it's if it's reasonable driving and, and we can get them back in time for school, they'll go mm -hmm. with me. But it, it, most mm -hmm. of the time, not. It's we have to go so far to to make enough money right. to survive. So. Right. 
Well, well, we all wish you well, and we Thank know you, that you have uh, you have brought a lot of spirit to this community, <laughs> and a lot of people look forward to you being at the Heart Fund. Yeah, and it, it's going to be that. on February 16th, and you won't be able to be there this year, which no, is a shame. No, I wish I wish I could. It's been a while since I've got to do it, mm -hmm. and I, hopefully one day I'll get to get to be a part of that again right. uh, more, more than once. But, right. But, well, we're going to take a break right now, and we're going to go to the sports calendar. And when we come back, Bill and I are going to have to say goodbye because what happened again today? Well. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sherry. Thank yeah, you sure. very much. liking this job better every day. I now have an autographed picture of Mountain Heart, and I also have their new CD that is available, he said, at Walmart here or on his website. Right. And it's uh, www.mountainheart.com, and awesome man, awesome musician, uh, awesome group of men. So y'all, um, you know, check him out. And then if you do get to see him locally, do that. But uh, that that is a great story, and that's a great success. What, what an awesome thing to get... He does what he loves. Exactly. He does what, kind of like me getting to show up here every morning. <laughs> every morning, and I just love it. It's so funny because I wake up before the clock goes off, even though I told poor Roger I don't do mornings, and I've kind of made a liar out of myself. I'm here every morning bright and early, just chipper as can be. You're going to have to take that sign down at your house that says, I don't do mornings. <laughs> that's or right. Or is it that's somewhere right. around here? It's right behind Yeah, us. okay. And then I have another one at home. I have a rooster. Everybody knows I love roosters, and I have another sign that has a rooster crowing, and it says, let the stress begin. This is the most unstressful thing we do because it's fun. And and the guests have been phenomenal. I, I am so pleased. And, and guys, give me your ideas. Remember, um, what's our phone number, Bill? Uh, phone number is 1-866-939-TODAY or 2329. Right. And our website is today at North Georgia now, and it's northgana.com. Right. And, and send me your ideas. You know, um, we laugh about the, the big road, as we call it, and, and I go down so far, and then I want to turn back and come back to the mountains. My dermatologist is moving from Canton up to near the racetrack in Pickens County. I may never have to leave Pickens or Gilmer a fan, and again, I'll just come north. So I'm getting excited. You know? Well, There's something about that traffic, guys. When you get older, the traffic just doesn't work for me. Well, at least it's not Atlanta. That's right. That's right. And we are so blessed. We are so blessed to be in a community that lets us do what we do every day. And, and to say hello to folks who tune in every day, like uh, Tim and Faye Hitt, who tune in every day. And, and, and folks like Gene Thomas. I don't know if you know Gene and Thelma. They are at every Inspirations concert. They called him because Darren Osborne's going to be here next week. They have actually offered to go up to the, the guy's bus and pick up Darren and bring him to the show. Wow. So, so a lot of good people are tuning in, and we thank you so much. And, and we love the cards and letters. Keep them coming. Uh, keep the ideas coming. Um, I want to interview you tomorrow. We're going to have Mary Jane Griffith on, and we're going to have one of Georgia's first female troopers who happened to be a trooper years ago when women didn't do that. 
and she drove for the governor's wife, Miss Shirley Miller. So um, tomorrow's going to be a good show. Mary Jane Griffith will be on, and Fran Cathy will be on. And Fran has um, has some stories to tell, maybe about my speeding. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> She it's did. going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day tomorrow. And we're going to talk about Tate and the new depot. That's You know, we're moving our depot across the street and going to have a whole revitalization down there. So oh, good. Tate's a beautiful community. That's where Mom and uh, Roy lived when they first moved to Jasper. And uh, beautiful, beautiful little town. It's an old depot, too. Oh, it is. Old. It is. I'm not sure why they're moving it across the street, but Miss Jane can tell us about that tomorrow. So that's going to be fun. And then... Every day we have ball games going on in the community. We're going to have um, ball season coming up, and we'll have sports coming up this weekend. It's almost the weekend. Mm -hmm. Almost. It's almost the weekend, and that's one thing ETC does. You know, we do live things out at the ball fields, and then we do um, community-related things, the Heroes of the Heart. I watched a great one last night with Ben Kiker on it. That was wonderful. That was awesome. And with Tommy Qualls, which, you know, I didn't know the history of those guys because I didn't live here then. So, But it, it was very interesting. So... ETC is all about you. Now, from North Georgia now today, I'm Sherry Martin. And I'm Bill Sinyard. Have a great day today and a better day tomorrow. I hate goodbyes. Well, let's just say see you later. See you later. Every day, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 9.30. You be here and we'll be here too.